Testing. There we go. All right. Let's start over. Good morning. <laughs> welcome to worship at East Liberty Presbyterian Church. We welcome you, whether you are gathered here in our courtyard under the cathedral of God's magnificent summer sky, or whether you are worshiping with us from the comfort of your own homes, welcome as we worship God together. Today, as you will notice um, from our liturgy, is our celebration of Youth Sunday. This is an annual tradition at ELPC where our youth, our senior high youth, um, write our service, select our hymns, create the prayers, and where we hear a word from some of our graduating seniors, um, the youth will be leading the service. And today we rejoice that we are finally going to be able to seal the sacrament of baptism with water. There are three youth who are a part of our confirmation class in the spring of 2020 who professed their faith in Jesus Christ, went through the whole year of um, learning with their peers, um, and who were baptized on Zoom at a session meeting with their parents watching on a little square window, but they didn't um, receive the water anointing their heads because it wasn't safe for us to do so. So we give thanks that on this Youth Sunday, we will seal the covenant of baptism. I'm kind of getting goosebumps talking about this, actually. Seal the covenant of baptism for three of our confirmands from last year. So we give thanks for the youth of our church, for those who are present leading our worship, and for those who are an active, dynamic part of our family of faith, but who could not be here today. And so for all of our youth, we give thanks to God. You will notice that Today is our first Sunday of in-person worship in the Garth, our courtyard at ELPC. We will be here through Labor Day weekend, weather permitting. We ask that you please register for worship. You can continue to go on the link on our website, elpc.church. Um, and please know for those of you who want to be present in this space but do not want to sit outside, that we will have overflow seating in the Garth Overlook Room that overlooks this space. And so know that um, those registrations are available online as well. There are many events that are a part of our ministry together as we um, continue through our life and ministry as a church. Later today, um, the Children and Family Ministries team is sponsoring a summer kids ministry event at Highland Park. Um, if there's anyone who is like, oh man, I wish I had registered and I didn't and I want to bring my young kids, go on our website. We will make it possible for you to be there, but we do need to have um, registrations so that we have all of the supplies together for your kids. So please join us there and um, please pray for all of us who are going to be um, having our first in-person ministry with kids in a really long time. We're excited to be together. You'll notice there are several events coming up in the month of July. There are many listed in your bulletins if you're in person or if you've downloaded a bulletin at home, but I'll highlight a few that are on our slides today. Um, first, there will be a silent walk led by Pastor BJ at the Freeport Community Trail 
on July 10th at 9 a.m. from 9 to 10.30 a.m. So please sign up with Pastor BJ if you will be joining him and others for that time of meditation in nature. We are also hosting um, us middle school mission days on the, from the 11th through 12th. The middle schoolers will be engaging in mission ministry outdoors and will be sleeping in tents in our courtyard. So if anyone's interested in more information, please um, email Sarah Hackett and she will be happy to help you sign up. The um, Environmental Task Force um, is also sponsoring a book club. Um, they will meet on Monday the 12th at 7 p.m. The plan is to gather at Garfield Community Farm, but if it rains for any re or if there's any reason why that doesn't work, then um, there will be a Zoom gathering instead. But mark your calendars for 7 on the 12th. If you have any more questions, please reach out to Na Nancy Hastings. You'll also see that there is an inquirer's class that's coming up in just about a month. So if you have been visiting our church, if you are interested in learning more about the life of and ministries of this church, or if you are, um, would like to welcome a neighbor or a friend and um, give them an opportunity to learn more about ELPC, um, please sign up for the inquirer's class that will be with Pastor Randy on the 25th of July on Zoom immediately following this worship. Um, you will note that now that we are gathering in person, we need ushers. Um, we need people to help pass out bulletins and also to help direct folks to seats, um, especially as we're navigating a smaller worship space as we worship in the courtyard. So if you're interested in helping to be a part of our um, usher team, please reach out to Norma Meyer and she will help, um, she will get you connected. And finally, our today worship service is back worshiping in person. Um, I believe that starting this Wednesday, today will actually be in the courtyard. Um, it will be live streamed also, but we invite you to please come and worship um, and pray together 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. There's a lot more to learn about our life together that you can find on our website, elpc.church. Um, we are grateful for opportunities to worship, to serve, to learn, um, to grow together, whether we are engaging in ministry, in person, socially distanced with our masks on, or whether we are engaging in ministry over Zoom. We are grateful for the vibrancy of this life of faith and so grateful to be worshiping together. It's been a long time since we've been out here. I'm really happy to see you all. Friends, as we gather to begin our worship time today, it's fitting that we acknowledge that we are here because of Christ's invitation to us, because of God's claim on our lives, and because the Holy Spirit has brought us here, uniting us as a family of faith. And so as we begin our time of worship, I invite you to safely greet one another with a sign of Christ's love and Christ's peace. The paz de Cristo esté con ustedes. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet our siblings with a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace, peace. There's a spider coming down. Spider, is that over there? It's closer to her. Closer to her. No, closer to Heather. Okay. But there's a spider coming down from that tree. Yeah, yes, they are. Okay. And of course, the sun decided to come right to my face at this point. So. I will, definitely. But no matter where I move, it gets brighter. Okay. Hi, dear. How you doing, Doris? No, I have mine. I have okay. mine. And I'll see if I can work with the glasses on. Okay, how ridiculous do I look? You don't. Okay, cool. I like this. Okay, cool. Let's take the glare off. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hello. Okay. My name's Rachel Ammon. Please join me in the call to worship. Oh, yeah. Who is like God? God has measured the waters in the hollow of God's hand and marked <coughs> off the heavens with a span. God has enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, 
weighted the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. Lift up, Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created all things, God who brings out our host in numbers to none, calling them all by name, because God is great in strength, mighty in power, and will not forget anyone. May God renew our strength that we may that we might mount up with wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Let's Let us worship. Beloved siblings in Christ, 
We have gathered this beautiful morning in the church courtyard, our homes, and possibly other places, bound together by the Holy Spirit to worship God, to sing songs of praise, to celebrate our youth and confirmands, and to be fed by the word of God. And we do so as imperfect people who serve a perfect and merciful God. So let us pause for just a moment to acknowledge our imperfections and to confess our sins, trusting that God hears us, God forgives us, God restores us to right relationship with God and with one another. Will you pray with me this morning? Dear God, as we grow in our faith, we recognize we fall short of our own expectations and the vision you have for us. We are sorry. Thank you for the knowledge of your love and the blessing to know that we are always forgiven. Hear our silent prayers of a confession. Amen. People of God, even though we have questions about the goodness in the world, the power of God's promises, our own ability to live into God's call, we can take heart. God assures us that God's love is more powerful than hate. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Praise God. Hello, uh, my name is Samuele Novelli, and this year I graduated from Kappa as a percussion major. Um, I spent most of my high school in front of my computer working on music or on my drum set. It's really my passion, and I hope to pursue it as a career someday. Um, this coming fall, I am moving to Italy which is really exciting and I'm really grateful that um, I have parents that are cool enough to let me do that. Um, <laughs> I've been working throughout the year just trying to save enough money to go, so that's kind of exciting. Um, I didn't really prepare much to say, but honestly, when I look back at my time at EOPC, I remember being younger and always um, wanting to go up for children's time or something. I don't know. As I'm older, I kind of I'm really grateful for the experience I've had here, um, surrounded by a lot of really great people. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Now I'm gonna read something from the Bible. Um, Job 37, 14, 24, 42, one through six. Hear this, O Job, stop and consider the wondrous works of God. Do you know how God lays his command upon them and causes the lightning of his clouds to shine? Do you know the balancing of the clouds, the wondrous works of the one whose knowledge is perfect? You, whose garments are hot, when the earth is still because of the south wind, can you, like him, spread out the skies, unyielding as a cast mirror? Teach us what we shall say to him. We cannot draw up our case because of darkness. Should he be told that I want to speak? Did anyone ever wish to be swallowed up? Now, no one can look on the light when it is bright in the skies, when the wind has passed and cleared them. Out of the north comes golden splendor. Around God is awesome majesty. The Almighty, we, not, we cannot find him. He is great in power and justice and abundant righteousness. He will not violate. Therefore, mortals fear him. He does not regard any who are wise in their own conceit. Then Job answers the Lord. I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself, 
and repent in dust and ashes. This is the word of the Lord. Hello, I am Boaz Chapman, and I will be leading a time for children of all ages. Uh, how many of you out there have ever asked a question before? Uh, probably all of you. Uh, I just asked a question to you now. Uh, now, how many of you have ever, have ever asked a question and gotten the answer, I don't know, or just not gotten an answer? Uh, most likely all of you again. Uh, now, how did that make you feel? Maybe frustrated? I feel frustrated too sometimes when I uh, can't get an answer to a question. Now, I have a little trivia question for you. What was here in this very spot 20,000 years ago? Uh, maybe some trees, uh, forest? Uh, we don't really know. Um, we can guess but well, it's difficult to know for, uh, for certain. Um, now, here's one last question for you. What is God's plan for you personally? Uh, That's another question we really can't know the answer to for sure. We can guess and find some stuff out as your life goes on, but you'll, it's difficult to know the answer. Uh, struggling with difficult questions is a big part of what we do here as a church. Um, and sometimes there are questions we just can't answer, and it's okay to live with the mystery. I have a little homework assignment for all of you out there, if that's okay. I challenge you this following week to ask uh, w at least one good question a day. It can be something you're just curious about or something you know there's no easy answer to, but you want to ask anyway. Uh, please join me in prayer. God, help us ask good questions and accept that sometimes answers don't come easily or at all. Amen. been waiting for for over a year so I would like to in well I'll let Michelle invite forward those who are being confirmed and I need my um, assistant Dylan okay on behalf of the session I present the following members of the confirmation class to be received into membership by baptism and profession of faith Boaz Chapman Annabelle Dagenholtz and Ian Kuchera Boaz, Annabelle, and Ian, is it your desire to be baptized? If so, say, it is. And to all of you gathered here, as well as those of you who are joining us virtually, do we as the members of the Church of Jesus Christ promise to guide and nurture Boaz, Annabelle, and Ian in faith, by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging them to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of this church? If so, please answer, we do. Friends, we rejoice that today the profession of faith you made over a year ago will be sealed through the waters of baptism. We are grateful that you have already joined us in our common ministry and that today we get to celebrate the fullness of your profession of faith. We are reminded that through baptism we enter the covenant that God has established, giving us new life, guarding us from evil, and nurturing us by the love of God and God's people. So by embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve, by turning from evil, by turning to Jesus Christ. And so now I have a few questions of you, asking you then to reject sin, Profess your faith in Christ Jesus and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. So I ask all of you, 
trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. And do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, promising to follow his word and demonstrating his love? If so, say, I do. And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his teachings, showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. Dylan, I invite you to pour the water. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. We thank you, O oh God, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, and from it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now send your spirit, Lord God, to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and grant them, grant to them the body, and grant them to the body of Christ. Bind them to the household of faith. Guard them from all evil. Strengthen them to serve you with joy until the day you make all things new. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who with you and Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever, we pray. Amen. Boaz, I invite you to come forward. Please kneel. What is your given name? Boaz Chapman, I baptize you in the name of our triune God, creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Annabelle, please come forward. Yeah, there is water involved, sorry. <laughs> what is your given name? Annabelle Grace Dagenholtz. I baptize you in the name of our triune God, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. What is your given name? Ian Kuchera, I baptize you in the name of the triune God, our creator. God, our redeemer. God, our sustainer. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day and always. Amen. Friends, you have professed your faith. Your profession of faith has been sealed through the waters of baptism. Know what we've been telling you all along. You are God's. You are loved. You are a part of this family of faith. May God bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Siblings, will you join me in welcoming our newest siblings of faith to this family? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. you may be seated. Thank you. Congratulations. Can you put the lid on?
Now, now a gospel lesson. John 20, 24 through 29. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in his house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Prayer of Illumination. Dear God, Thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you this day. Help us to see your love in the words presented through the youth today. Open our minds and hearts in the way that we may serve you best. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So this morning's homily is a little different than most Sundays. On Youth Sunday, I write a homily with, uh, that's directed to these folks in the front pews over here and invite you all to listen in as we continue a conversation that began a long time ago, um, a conversation that preceded our planning for this time, a conversation that started with many of these kids when we were gathered on a rug here in the courtyard or on the steps in the chancel, as Samuele said. So, friends... As we worked together to craft this service, you selected scriptures and songs that centered around a common message of asking questions, of not being afraid to name what one doesn't know about God, what one doesn't know about the universe, or even what we don't know about ourselves. You've had this wisdom I've seen throughout the years that questions are portals to deeper understanding. I've seen this in confirmation classes that have gotten sidetracked with questions of epic proportion. And remember those flip charts we already had to write them all down when we were in person? Your questions reflect not only your curiosity, but also your wisdom. Your questions are not a sign of what you are lacking, but of all that you have to offer. For it is only by engaging the tough questions that one can gain knowledge. And only by wrestling with these questions can one figure out then how to make a lasting difference in the world. The scripture passages you've chosen today are snippets of conversation in which wise and righteous individuals, those whose lives are committed to following God, in which these individuals raise questions in which they are having, in, mo in both of these cases, crisis of faith. These people refuse to jump to conclusions, which, unfortunately, too many people say is a mark of faithlessness. But rather, these people of faithfulness name their confusion. They own their doubt. They say what others are thinking. They are brave enough to ask. 
Now, through their questions, they draw closer to God, a God who meets them in their questions. What's more, and what is fascinating, is that God answers their questions with questions. It is in this conversation of questions that a gateway to an experience of their active, living, perplexing, loving God takes place. It is through these questions that they encounter God. It is through these questions that their knowledge is expanded, that their relationship with God is deepened. It is through these questions that they grow. So it will come as no surprise to you as I offer a few snippets of wisdom this morning that my first challenge is similar to the Boaz, to Boaz's assignment to all of us. Keep asking questions. Don't settle for the status quo. Don't, ex- don't accept pat answers that were spoon-fed to you about life or the universe, or God, or even about yourselves. All of those things, all of those things simply are not that simple. Get comfortable with complexity. Notice what troubles you, what compels you. Notice what you find intriguing, and then dig in. Ask questions, and if your answers are not satisfactory, as Boaz reminded us a lot of times, we're met with, I don't know. Ask more. But take the time to form a good question. Remember, Boaz's call was that we not just ask a bunch of questions, but that we ask good questions. As any good scientist works hard to form a hypothesis before conducting an experiment, Take a step back and see what is it you are trying to learn. A well-formed question generates a clearer pathway toward understanding. It will unveil not only truth but possibility. It will show wherein we might find corruption or also good. And it might lead to more questions, but that just means you're getting somewhere. And don't shy away from the questions that are being asked of you. I had a political science professor in college who amazed me with his ability to ask the next best question of me that would open my understanding. It was uncanny. He could hear my ideas and my thoughts, but then he would ask the question that would make me go, "Uh uh-huh, I hadn't thought of it that way, and take my learning process further. My ability to learn was not dependent on his presentation of information, though he was very good at that too. But my ability to learn flourished because of his ability to ask good questions of me. His questions honed my thought process. They led me toward deeper self-examination, and they stoked my curiosity, wondering how I might not only engage these ideas, but how I might engage the world. And although I only had one class with him, unfortunately, he is one of the most influential teachers I've ever had. Remember, though, that questions are not relegated to classrooms, whether they're Sunday school classrooms or confirmation classrooms or classrooms in school. There are others in your midst who are trying to form the best question of you on college applications or job interviews, as you make new friendships, as you try to teach someone about an issue that is passionate to you, as you find love, as you discern your vocation. Questions form deeper relationships. They nurture our own knowledge of ourselves, but they nurture our connection to each other. And so know that the God who welcomes questions The God who meets questions with questions. The God who in the gospel says, ask, seek, knock. This is your God. A God of complexity. A God of awe. A God of wonder. A God of creativity. A God who invites you to explore, 
to explore this God, this world that God has made, and to explore the amazing creatures each one of you are. Know that good questions don't come to trip you up, but help you grow. Good questions allow you to be more authentic, engaged, and inspired. And so as you go out into the world this day, go forth with the courage to ask good questions, a willingness to answer the good questions asked of you, and the knowledge that you were made, redeemed, and are sustained by the power of a God whose questions and answers and love know no end. So keep me posted as you explore this world. I am better because of your questions. And for that, I say thanks be to God. Amen this point, I welcome Sonia to come forward and share a few words as one of our graduating seniors. Hello, my name is Sonia Dagenholtz. It's strange, sorry. it's strange to be standing up here today when it feels like just yesterday I was finishing ninth grade sitting in a pew in the sanctuary during East Sunday, dreaming about what lesson or story I would have to tell in four years. <laughs> the end of my high school, the end of my last four years in high school was unusual, to say the least. Two weeks ago, I graduated from Obama Academy in a socially distanced gym with a limited guest capacity. In the fall, I will attend the University of Pittsburgh, but we are uncertain if we will be able to safely attend in-person classes. When I think back to the first year I participated in Youth Sunday, I try to remember what I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about how much of an impact ELPC had on me, how coming to Sunday school meant I had church friends, how my siblings and I would have to, how after the service I would be introduced to my mom's church friends, and how my siblings and I would have to sit and wait patiently while my mom would talk to her church friends for what I am absolutely certain was like three hours. <laughs> What I would have said four years ago would have been about the community that has been built within these walls and how grateful I was to have a place in it. I stand by that message, though what I want to say today is somewhat different. The past four years have changed my perspective more than I expected them to. I have realized that the true impact that ELPC had on me has not, in fact, been from within these walls, but in what I have learned outside of the church. I have learned more serving food in senior centers in New York City, in building ramps in West Virginia, and in making superhero capes for kids living in the Ronald McDonald House here in Pittsburgh. Most of all, I have learned from the Zoom calls that I took in my room during doing Sunday school and serving on session in the past year. I have learned that ELPC is more than the walls of the church, that this community has had such an impact on me extends beyond the bounds of the building and into all of the people that we have helped. The East Liberty Presbyterian Church community is not contingent on where we hold our services and it exists even when we are far apart. I don't think that any of us expected to be where we are today. But somehow, despite a global pandemic, despite the losses of loved ones, despite the suffering we have endured the past year, we have made it to this point stronger more hopeful, and more connected as a community. Thank you. Masks and microphones don't always work well together. So this is a part of the service where I would customarily invite all of the youth to come forward, as well as all of the youth's parents and Sunday school teachers and everyone who's been a part of their life of faith. And we would make a huddle and have the laying on of hands. So we're not going to do laying on of hands today, but I am going to invite the youth to come forward. And I would like to invite any graduating seniors to sort of come front and center 
And I'd like to invite all of the kids to kind of come and spread out and Charlotte to go to the podium because she'll segue us into our prayer time. We are grateful. Can I share your name? Is it okay if I say your name? We're grateful that Amos has joined us, so another one of our graduating seniors from Taylor Alderdice. And um, there are others whose names are also listed in the bulletin, but who couldn't be with us today. And so if you are so inclined, you're welcome to extend your hand in an act of blessing. But I ask that you extend your hearts, no matter what, and join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks. Your blessings know no end. And we stand before you today giving thanks for the blessing of all of these youth. Especially we pray for these graduating seniors as they leave high school, as they step into the world to begin new chapters of their journeys. As you have enfolded them with your loving arms, as you have equipped them with many gifts to your service, as you have placed upon them a call. We pray that you will go before them as they step into this world. We pray that you will prepare a way for them, that you will protect them, but that you will also inspire them and nurture them, that they will flourish in your care. We pray also that they will know not only your love, but ours. And as Sonia has said, this family of faith extends well beyond the bounds of this building. Might they be blessed today and always with a reminder that they are yours and that you have equipped them for the life ahead. And so we pray for your blessing to be upon them today, tomorrow, and always. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. We invite you to continue in a time of prayer as Charlotte leads us in our prayers of intercession. You all may be seated if you'd like. God of love and mercy, help us to look forward in this time of uncertainty. Lead us as we face changes, losses, and opportunities. God of justice, we pray for our community, our country, and our world. Guide us and strengthen us as we seek to help one another. Walk with us as we pursue new beginnings and push us forward when we feel adrift. Thank you, Lord, for staying with us through our brightest times and through some of our darkest. In Jesus' name, amen. Hear us now as we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hello, my name is Ian Kuchera, and would you please join me in an offering invitation? We offer our gifts in response to God's love and the grace of Jesus Christ, which we seek to make known through the ministries of this congregation. Please visit elpc.church if you would like to make a contribution or leave your donation in the collection box in the sanctuary.
Would you now please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving and dedication? El Señor esté con ustedes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Levantemos nuestros corazones. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Demos gracias el Señor nuestro Dios. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give thanks for the friends and family that have been given by you. We praise you for the love and dedication in each and every one of our lives. May you give us courage and confidence in life. May we also open our hearts to those in need and share your gifts with them. By giving us your love, we shall go as your servants, ready to show others your love. Thank you, God. Before Sonia um, sends us out with a charge and benediction, um, I would like first to um, give thanks for all who have nurtured the lives of faith of all of these amazing youth, their families, their church school teachers, youth group leaders, chaperones, mentors, and friends. I would also like to give thanks for, to each of these youth and give thanks to God for you for your leadership today. So thank you for your leadership in this service as well as your leadership throughout the life of our church. We're so grateful for each of you. Um, and also on behalf of the membership and outreach committee, if you exit via the Penn Avenue doors, there is some ice cold water <clears throat> and granola bars if you would like to cool off before you head out. And now I turn it over to Sonia. As you go out into the world, engage the questions that you might continue to learn about God, the world, and yourselves. May the power of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace to love and serve and enjoy our God. Amen. <laughs>